Alright, are you fucking ready for this shit? I spent the last four months preparing endlessly for this exact moment. I spent so long watching completely unrelated trading card anime. I spent so long playing completely unrelated trading card video games. Let's do this shit. Are you ready for this shit? I don't think you're fucking. That's your last shield. We'll see about that. Luke, I need to see your deck. Of course, but why? This card isn't on your deck list, Luke. And I'm afraid rule infractions carry very stiff penalties. But, but I... I'll have to disqualify you, and I'm afraid that could also mean that you've lost your invitation to the Master Tournament. But I don't even know how this happened. <sighs> I'm sorry, Luke. But the guidelines are very clear on this matter. Without these wins, you no longer qualify for an invitation. I understand. Bye-bye, Hotshot. The judges have to know that card was planted. This is going to put our whole tournament bid in jeopardy. Can we appeal the ruling? Knight already tried, but the rules for this situation are very specific. So that's it then. There's nothing we can do. I can't believe we're going to lose everything on a technicality. I could get my rank up high enough to re-qualify for the tournament. Your rank has been reset to zero, Luke. Do you know how many wins you'd have to get over the course of the week to pull this off? Wins I can do. I just need to know where the games are. Well, there's a tournament at school this afternoon, but even then you'd have to be dueling constantly. If you can get me the duels, I'll win them. I will make it back into the tournament. I already like Luke, he's got determination, he's got balls, he knows how to get shit done. Wait, fuck! Okay, so maybe I'm a little rusty after taking a, a four-month break, but let's go in there again. Let's do a second. Give me a mulligan here. Alright, let's do this again. This is definitely not my fourth attempt, but this is a new deck with a new civilization without all the cards I'm familiar with, so it does take a bit to get used to. Unlike the last three attempts, we get lucky this time, and Lucy doesn't summon a bunch of Braid Claws before we can get any blockers out. The Bloody Skeeto isn't a great blocker, but it's something. Our deck's heavy blockers and heavy hitters are Dianork and the Law, respectively. Dianork takes less time to summon and has 5,000 power, so it's a great blocker. We get to summon Law because Lucy doesn't have anything that can take down Dianork, but that Bloody Skeeto is as good as dead, and Dianork will then be our only blocker, which isn't great. We use Dianork to block and destroy one of Lucy's monsters and then hit her with Law, but that leaves us open to have one of our shields attacked by Miro Ooze, and there's not anything we can do about that until we summon another blocker. Or at least that's what I thought until Lucy used Rothus's ability to get rid of our weakest monster and leave her field empty. Fucking great play there, computer. Lucy and I both summon more monsters, and we use Gregorian Worm to get rid of her blocker so that way we can take a Law on the offensive and destroy more shields which works splendidly. The bitch summons Grey Balloon, which is a decent blocker and could seriously put a hamper in our plans if we didn't use our spell card Solar Ray to tap it, thus making it unable to defend while we beat her up. Because of that move, she now has no shields and we have four, so things are looking good. Unfortunately, because Dianork is still our only blocker, we had to let one of her attacks through, but we're still definitely going to win, no question about it.
All right, that was more of a fucking adventure than I would have liked, but we gotta keep going. I practice for 20 hours a day. The last time I played as Luke, his deck had way more defensive monsters, so this fight is going to be an incredibly close battle, especially since our starting hand isn't so great. Quinn summons a useful monster way before we do, but thank fuck it can't attack directly, which gives us time to breathe. And when we do summon our first offensive monster, he sends it right back with, uh, Spiral Gate. Great. Fucking great. But maybe we should be thanking him, because all that did was give us more time. Time to summon Shadow Moon, which gives all other Dark Civilization monsters a boost in power, making our Bloody Mosquito a 6,000 blocker now. As much good as that'll do. On Quinn's next turn, he summons two offensive monsters that actually can attack directly, which is bad news for us because we only have one blocker and said blocker explodes after it blocks. But we get to summon Photoside, which thanks to Shadow Moon has a whopping 11,000 power. We also get to deal our first damage to his shields, but unfortunately Quinn also sends our only blocker back to our hand with Spiral Gate. And this sets us up for quite a beating, because not only does he destroy Shadow Moon with one of his monsters that can't attack directly, but he takes out two of our shields. Next turn we get to summon more blockers to defend our ass, and this time one of them isn't a bloody Skeeto, so that one won't be sticking around for a while longer. We attack one of Quinn's tapped monsters with Photoside, and then summon a monster that can attack directly next turn, but that's all we can do for now. At least we have protection. Quinn can't think of anything to do, so he essentially passes his turn to us, which lets us get another hit in on his shield, and he gets another Spiral Gate. Why wouldn't he get another Spiral Gate? Why wouldn't that be what he gets? It's a pretty useless Spiral Gate, though, because we summon Photoside back immediately after he sends it to our hand. The bad news for us is that, because Quinn has so many goddamn monsters, he wipes out everything but Photoside and gets a whole two hits in on our shields. We summon a couple of attackers and use Photoside to get rid of Quinn's direct attacker, but that's all we can do for now, we don't have any blockers. Quinn then uses another card to send shit back to our hand, but we just summon it back, and this time with a Grey Balloon, which is a decent blocker for once. Now we have a direct attacker and a blocker, and Quinn has neither of those things. This obviously gives us the upper hand for now. He then proceeds to get rid of our blocker and direct attacker and grow a shield back thanks to a spell card, but hey, no direct damage, which is the best we can hope for. Then we summon two direct attackers ourselves. Then we both summon a bunch of monsters and I pray we fucking get a blocker eventually, which we do in the form of Dianork, because otherwise we were just gonna get completely wrecked. Quinn uses more annoying cards to send shit back to our hand, but we still have more monsters than he does, we have a blocker and he doesn't, so we're still gonna win. Wait, fuck, he just sent our blocker back. Okay, so after we both bashed our attack monsters into each other, we now have no shields left, but it's my turn, so I get the win. That was way too fucking close for comfort. Maybe this time the universe just takes pity on us because we get two blockers early on and one of them isn't a bloody Skeeto. We also get Ethel which is like a law but better because it can attack past blockers. This means unless Mandy has some cards to remove Ethel from the field we're gonna get a few free hits in. We manage to keep a successful defense no problem with our Emerald Grass and even kill her own Dianork. Things are looking good. She summons another fucking Dianork, but we can just kill it next turn, that's what Photosite is for. This pattern keeps up for the rest of the duel. She can't summon anything to get rid of Ethel, she can't summon anything to attack us because I keep killing it with Photosite, and she can't get past her Emerald Grass.
All right, so next time with Luke, we're going to go see what the fuck that school tournament is about. And if you notice the music sounded a bit different this time, that's because I find the regular Duel Masters music, while atmospheric, can be pretty uh, sleep-inducing. So the music used for Luke will be from Yu-Gi-Oh! Nightmare Troubadour on the Nintendo DS, another trading card game that isn't nearly as badass as its name sounds. I'll see you next time.